It's May 2022 and we're looking back at April's property industry news. But before we do, if you enjoy this video, hit like on it and for similar videos in the future, hit The big news this month was of course the OCR announcement when Reserve Bank Governor Adrian Orr announced a 0.5% or a 50 basis point increase to New Zealand's official cash rate. This was the biggest OCR increase in 22 years on the back of massive inflation of 6.9%, well above their target inflation rate of 2%. This is fine. Not since 17th of May 2000 has the Reserve Bank increased the official cash rate by 50 basis points when the then Reserve Bank Governor and future leader of the National Party, Don Brash I don't think I'm racist raised New Zealand's OCR rate to 6.5% because of an inflation rate of 5.8%. That's right, it's been so long since we had a 50 basis point jump in the OCR that at the time you would have heard about it on your monochrome screen Nokia 3210. There have been a handful of times when the official cash rate has decreased by 50 basis points, but increases are almost always by 25 basis points. An increase of this size is noteworthy, of how out of control inflation is at 6.9%, with the Reserve Bank wanting to get in control early. Not many economists were surprised by the latest OCR move, with the strong money being firmly on a 50 basis point increase to be the likely outcome given the crazy high inflation we've seen recently. The Reserve Bank released the news with the usual pomp and ceremony. The pace of economic growth has slowed globally. Um, in large part due to the continued elevated uncertainty created by the persistent impacts of the COVID-19 virus. With the release saying it remained comfortable with the outlook of interest rates that it had published in February and that a larger move now also provides more policy flexibility ahead in light of uncertain global economic environment, namely COVID and the Ukraine. For April, and seemingly on the back of the OCR announcement, mortgage interest rates were up again with one bank moving very quickly just days after the OCR announcement. The others tried their very best to hold where they were. Eventually, all of the other three main banks moved their rates up slightly, with the one-year interest rate now sitting at 4.55%, compared to 2.1% at the same time last year. With the First Bank moving quickly to raise their rates and the others taking a while, this month saw the biggest spread in interest rates in a decade. For at least a fortnight over April, one bank was offering 3.99% and another was offering 4.55%. In recent years, it hasn't been worth refinancing to other banks just to get a good interest rate, with the typical difference between banks being less than 5 basis points or 0.05%. It's about a dollar difference per week, per $100,000 of mortgage. But with the spread of 0.55%, that could be tempting enough to try and hop across to another bank to chase an interest rate. A mortgage of $700,000 could save nearly $4,000 per annum in interest by grabbing that low rate, not to mention the additional cash contribution benefits. Total saving could be closer to $9,000 or $10,000 for a $700,000 mortgage. Due to the time it would take to refinance and lock in a rate, homeowners would have needed to move very quickly to take advantage of this, but it could have been possible. In housing, there are less visitors to open homes and more houses for sale. According to the CoreLogic Property Market and Economic Update, property sales volumes in the first quarter of 2022 were the weakest in a decade. And while Omicron may have played some part in this, the key drivers are more likely higher interest rates and reduced availability of finance. With more houses on the market and fewer buyers scooping them up, what does this mean for people who are ready to buy? If you have the ability to make an offer and can afford potentially higher interest rates in the future, now is as good a time as it's been in recent years. Not just a good time, but the best time in a decade. You're not having to battle as many other buyers at auctions or wonder if someone is coming in with a crazy tender offer. The buyer's market has come and it will bring some buying opportunity with it. But a recent One Roof survey showed that 73% agreed with the statement that applying and being accepted for a home loan is too hard now. Check the language on that, not that they've been declined or just can't, but think it's too hard. 
Unfortunately, some will be right, but importantly, a lot will be wrong. In fact, a lot of mortgage applicants might just need a few tweaks to their spending habits to be able to buy. The question every potential homeowner should be asking themselves, therefore, isn't, can I get a mortgage? Most people who rent can get some sort of borrowing because their rent payments can cover some sort of mortgage. The question should be, how much mortgage will the bank approve for me? And is that enough to buy a home that I'm happy to live in? If not, then the question is, what can I do? What can I change in my income or expenses to increase my borrowing to get into the house I want? On the topic of lending policies, we're expecting to hear the government's proposed changes to the Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act, also quickly becoming known as the Kmart, Kombucha and Kfry Finance Act because of the impact that recent spending has on your ability to borrow. Changes to the Act were expected to remove the requirement for banks to use an applicant's recent spending and instead use reasonable forecasting and judgment on the spending with the understanding that spending habits change once a mortgage is in place. So, what do we hear? <whistles> Nothing. Six months on from the disastrously put together triple CFA that effectively destroyed mortgage lending in New Zealand and the government still hasn't fixed it. Estimated timelines for the changes were always looking to June for the changes to be implemented, but those that could have bought a home this year, if not for their occasional Uber Eats experience, may need to wait a little longer. June is just around the corner and we're yet to hear anything solid. And on that happy note, we wrap up this month's review with optimism for the coming month. I'm Rupert Goff, talk to you soon.